from the vault. Ooh. So what we're going to do is we're going to play the videos of some floppy work that we've been doing. And also, um, we have, uh, do you want to just uh, give people a reason to stick around? You have got your little gamer. Yeah, thing? show the little gamer. Yeah, show so, some floppy disk stuff. Yeah, so we have the, 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 the famous, tiniest playable zo uh, Doom playing device. So. Cl open, most open source one. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe, maybe not. We'll I don't see. know. Who cares? Um, so we're we'll gonna play. It, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna play the the flop, the floppy videos first, and then I'm gonna play the latest thing that we did with the um, Doom player. So here we go. Ada, what is this? I'm finishing up uh, my last test for the Cutie Pie ESP32. Yeah, the text is backwards. Um, the Pico uh, board that I designed and I've been working a lot with over the weekend. I'm doing some power tests. This is um, I did functional tests over here um, by having it in this little. Uh, cutie pie board so you can uh, emulate NES games. Um, but for some people, they really want low power functionality. So I want to make sure I've got that all fixed up because it's really hard to fix low power mistakes um, after the board's been sent out. So here is my PPK uh, from Nordic and you can see, uh, you know, normal functionality. It's about 40 milliamps. And then this is uh, light sleep. So it's about 2.4 uh, milliamps or two to three milliamps. And then for deep sleep, when I turn off the NeoPixel, I get down to about 70 microamps, which is great because uh, the chip is about 50 uh, microamps and the regulator is also about 20. So total about 70. Early data, what is this? Okay, I've had a lot of success over this weekend porting Retro Go over to the ESP32 Cutie Pie. That's this, it's got an ESP32 on the back of it, a little bit, a bit like this, except that's the C3. Uh, micro SD, um, I squared C expander on off switch, um, little lipo battery that I can stick here and a TFT screen. And, um, I got Nofrendo, you know, part of the retro go working. What do you want to play? You want to play Dragon Warrior? Sure. Oh, wait, sorry. That's a different game, new game. And I've got even audio working out the, um, headphones. So you can actually start to play these games and test them out. So Dragon Warrior is one of my favorite um, old school RPGs. It's by uh, Enix, um, pre-Final Fantasy. But um, this is working and I uh, only made one little mistake. Uh, audio is coming out of A3, should have been coming out of A0. But I'll fix that on the next board ref. Okay, so Nofrendo works fine on the ESP32 Cutie Pie with his little board. Um, and I thought, well, maybe let's do um, Game Boy next. So this is GNU Boy Go. Let's start a new game. And I remember playing this. I remember getting a Game Boy when I was very young. It was like a birthday present. Maybe I was like 12. I don't know. But uh, I played this game all the time. This in Tetris. I didn't have a Game Boy Color though. Just the uh, Game Boy Classic. Still, um, it's a great little game. And uh, I don't know. I can't wait to like finish this. I don't think I actually finished it when I was a kid. But, um, all right, so uh, Game Boy emulator works, Nintendo emulator, we're gonna try a couple more emulators next. Hey, Lady, what is this? Okay, so I'm taking a pause from the floppy stuff, but for a good reason. Um, this is an Odroid Go. This is a really cool, um, like, portable, you know, Game Boy-like emulator that had an ESP32 rover in it, and it could load cards off an SD card, and, like, there's a bunch of emulators written for it, like uh, Nefrendo, NES, uh, GNU Boy, Game Boy, Sega, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I still have one of these. They're not made anymore, unfortunately, but this was really cool. Actually, it was a, it was a really great little emulator. But what's nice is that I wanted to try to port um, the emulator itself to the ESP32 Pico so I can make like a really cute little gaming thing. This is my prototype. And you can see um, I got the TFT initialization like not quite right, but I do have TFT on there. And uh, on the back is the Cutie Pie ESP32, an SD card, um, and some circuitry, battery charging, and all that. So uh, it's slowly but surely coming together. First sign of life. Really, Data, what is this? Uh, one more emulator that works in RetroGo is Sega Master Systems, which means, um, you know, somebody was asking, can you play Sonic? And yes, you can. You can get all the rings. Oh, no. Well, not very good at this game. Uh, the other thing uh, somebody was asking was, uh, is there cheats for Doom? And the answer is, um, you know, you normally you would like type in stuff on your keyboard, but with this, hold on, you can go into the options menu and under cheats, you can, you know, do the chainsaw and vulnerability, 200 health, get all the keys. 
and all that uh, makes the game lots of fun because you can uh, get all the weapons from the start. Kaboom! Great for playing Doom on the go with all your favorite weapons. Early data, what is this? This is a uh, three and a half inch HD floppy disk that has been formatted as a Mac 800K. I did that by tricking it, by taping over the hole over here. Um, and I put this in the PowerBook 180 and formatted it. Thank you uh, for the PowerBook 180. Uh, it's 800K because 800K floppies are kind of interesting. And I've been trying to read this on sort of a standard PC, Sony, or Panasonic three and a half inch uh, floppy disk drive. But what's interesting is it doesn't really work. Here I've got it with um, Flux Engine. You can see um, the dots are sectors that read fine. And you see like, as you get to um, higher and higher tracks, um, you know, the sectors don't show up and it's like they're okay for like the first few tracks, but then they disappear. Well, the reason for that is actually kind of interesting. Mac 800K floppies are weird. Um, each track actually has a different number of sectors and the pulse widths change. So um, on the outer track, which is actually track zero, the pulses are very short. And as they get closer and closer to the center near the hub, um, the pulses get wider because you want more um, magnetic media to pass under the head. And um, for MFM floppies, which is what normal IBM floppies are for floppy disks, the track widths, um, sorry, the bit widths don't change. They're like two, four, six um, microseconds, and they're the same no matter what track they're on, whether they're on track zero all the way out here or track 80 all the way in here. So if you're trying to read Mac format floppies, the outer tracks will read just fine because they use the short bit widths, but as the bit widths get larger in time, but stay the same in um, physical space, these disk drives have trouble reading them. So we might have to do some special math to get Mac 800K floppies uh, to work with this. It could also be the diskette itself. More to come. And that's top secret. Yeah. All right, wanna get some questions going. Yeah. Get back in the vault.